Last year I made a video when I purchased the Canon 60. Yes, the original, not the Mark II. At that point, I had been filming for YouTube for six years with my Rebel T6i, which to this day, I honestly love that camera. It is my boyfriend's main camera, as of now. I was looking for something a little bit more professional, and the reason why I chose the 60 is was because it was full frame, and it was well within my budget. And those two things were just like, it for me. I ended up finding it on eBay for $200, so I purchased it without even thinking about it. It was surprisingly good in low-light situations despite what you may hear in other reviews, and it was the right size and weight in my opinion for someone like me. Unfortunately, there was one big con that I just couldn't get over, and that was the autofocus. The Canon 6D does not have continuous autofocus, and you have to rely on the back button focus at all times to basically find the focus for you. I do not think that this is a deal breaker if you do a lot of studio work. If you're able to get your models to stand still if you're shooting product shoots, I feel like this camera would be perfect for you and if you're used to doing manual focus, then by all means, go ahead and get this camera. However, most of my work is kind of fast-paced. I usually do couple shoots when it comes to engagements, weddings, and stuff like that where I have to move quick and I have to be able to, you know, look at my couple, see that how they're posing, how their arms are placed, how if she's wearing a dress, how it is, like how it is, how it looks, her hair, just too many things and when it comes down to just putting my camera up, I need to be able to get that shot and move on. So for that reason, I decided that just the Canon 60 just wasn't it for me. I was having a lot of issues and I would go outside, use the back button focus, even use the magnifier like I mentioned in my video. And when I came home, I had a lot of blurry pictures that just was kind of not what I was aiming for, obviously. I do want to mention that I'm a firm believer that you should create your content with whatever you can afford. By no means am I saying that the Canon 60 is a bad camera. Honestly, I really liked it. If I had a different kind of workflow, I would have totally kept that camera. But I also think that you know, your gear should be very specific on how you work, your workflow. You should always choose what makes your job easier and more efficient. For this reason, I decided to sell my Canon 60 and by my Canon 5D Mark IV. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I chose the 5D Mark IV over the Canon 60. And I do wanna mention that the Canon 60 Mark II was not in the picture at that time, so if you're gonna comment that below, <laughs> please. Uh, I wish I would've known that. The Canon 5D Mark IV has 30 megapixels compared to the 60, which only has 20. This camera is offering ISO from 100 to 32,000, and that's expandable to 100 and 2,400. I'm not sure at which point you're supposed to use these, but if you want to, I guess they're available. The 5D has a 3.2 inch LCD screen and the 6D has a 3 inch. Honestly, this wasn't a deal breaker for me. They both just pretty much look the same, but the 5D did have a touchscreen screen. And that's something that I was very used to with my T6i and it was just honestly comfortable for me. I went to touch it a couple times and I just like remembered like, oh my gosh, this doesn't work this way. The 5D has a 7 shutter flap per second where the 6D has a 4.5 and this is very obvious to me when I was doing shoots. The 5D is just much quicker and it just gets so many pictures back to back and the 6D obviously struggled with the autofocus so that made the whole experience just a lot slower and frustrating. Even though the 6D is quite small and in my opinion it's not that heavy, it was definitely heavier than my T6i, but the 5D it is almost 2 pounds, so depending on what equipment you're using with it, how what lens you have mounted, it can definitely get very heavy, especially if you're like vlogging. I would not recommend this camera for vlogging, it would probably kill your wrist, and even after shoots when I come home I do feel like my wrists are just tired because it is a little bit heavy. Both bodies are weather sealed, although Canon would never admit for them to be waterproof, but in my opinion the 5D is a little bit more robust. It just feels like it can go through a lot more, I guess, damage than the 6D. The 5D also does video at 1080p at 60 frames per second and 4K at 30 frames per second with a crop. But the biggest difference between the 5D and the 60, and obviously the most important to me, was the continuous autofocus. It is extremely quick, amazing with face tracking, and just honestly phenomenal. The 5D has 61 autofocus points, with 21 of these being cross type, where the 6D only has 11. And honestly, I didn't think this was going to be a deal breaker. I watched a lot of reviews saying that this just really doesn't mean anything. And I did kind of see a difference when I was shooting something, if I had my subject just on 
the edges of the image I did have to like press the button halfway and lock my focus and kind of like move the camera and have them be on one of these sides I would come home and the image on the screen would look like it was on focus but when I looked at it on my computer on the big screen it just completely missed it so that is something that hasn't happened to me with 5d I get almost 95% of the shots on focus with the 5D and almost 100% of the time I'm using the Sony focus and this allows you to um, kind of choose where you want the focus to be and it's just really easy to toggle with this little button that they put here on the 5D. I'm going to insert a video um, and that just moves, I can move it around on my shoot so quick left to right, up and down, wherever I see my subject being and it doesn't slow me down at all. It is so quick, it's like my brain just knows to do that like I don't know it's just so easy and I find it that it has made my job just a lot more easier and effective and that, honestly it's the ultimate goal to find something that works for you you can sit here and you can watch a million reviews of people saying that whatever the RP the R5 the R6 you shouldn't be using anything that's not mirrorless in 2021 and honestly most of my gear is older I don't really have anything newer even my video camera is a Sony a7 II which people say that it sucks for a video I just find that I don't have the money to spend for those things and I just want to try it for myself and if it works then I will go ahead and keep it and that is kind of like the mindset that I have I don't want to go and spend every year on something new there's always something new coming out you just have to find the things that are valuable to you and that work for you when it comes to functionality, the 5D is very professional and it does extremely well in almost any situation. I use the 5D as my main camera for all my shoots and I have tested it out on video and I even put it on my Ronin SC with the 40mm f2.8 pancake lens and it did extremely well. Honestly, I didn't think that the Ronin SC could take the weight of the 5D but it kind of worked and I'm really really happy that it did. Not only is the autofocus really good on this camera but it also does really well in higher ISOs. I have taken images in the evening at 4000 ISOs and have come home to a really usable image. No grain whatsoever and it's just really important to me and I feel like this is where this camera really really shines. The quality image for both video and photo is very much detailed and much sharpened. I believe Canon came out with a 6D Mark II like I mentioned earlier um, and to be honest if I ever get a second body this would probably be what I go for because honestly I do have to say that if it didn't have the autofocus like problem I would not have gone for anything else so it was kind of a bummer so I want to say that as of today I have no desire of upgrading my 5d and absolutely love this camera this is coming from someone that is constantly looking at reviews constantly seeing what's out there and just comparing things with whatever I can get. I am extremely happy with this camera and would repurchase it again in a heartbeat. I hope this video really helped you if you are deciding on getting the 5D versus the 6D original or if you're just getting the 6D and you wanted to hear a second opinion on somebody that has had it and sold it. If you were looking to get the 6D in 2021, I would definitely recommend getting the 6D Mark II and it also has a flip out screen which is huge for YouTube videos. So right now I'm filming with the 80D and that flip out screen it was what makes all the difference. I'm not always in a situation where I can plug it into my computer to see what I'm filming and this just makes it so much easier to see if I'm in focus. I can see the little face tracking box over my face so I'm trusting that I am on focus. I'm not really sure but I'm trusting it. So anyways, um, if you do a lot of YouTube work, if you film yourself, I would definitely recommend the 6D Mark II. However, if you are a started photographer like I mentioned before and you have models, you're doing photo shoots for food, for restaurants, if you have the time to go ahead and lock your focus, if you have the time to use um, manual focus lenses and that's what you're into, I say that this is a great, great camera and honestly, the low light capabilities are very comparable to the 5D Mark IV in my opinion. So that is it for this video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much for watching and remember to subscribe below, like this video, and I will see you guys hopefully on my next one. Oh, by the way, I never said my name. My name is Sheila, so thank you for being here and thank you for watching this video. Bye.